Third category of pranayams are called tranquilizing pranayam. Tranquilizing practices of pranayams are designed to relax the body increasing while simultaneously increasing the pranic capacity and conscious awareness. These pranayams stimulate the parasympathetic nervous systems and draws the awareness within. Some bring more, uh, some bring greater psychic sensitivity while others cool down the system. Tranquilizing techniques are usually practiced after Nadi Shodhan, which balances the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, tranquilizing practices are also done through the both nostrils together and in some cases through the mouth as well. We are going to look at those practices in a short while. These practices should be avoided by the persons who are excessively introverted over sensitive or psychically unbalanced as they may exacerbate these. So, uh, shitli, shitkari and these kind of pranayam should be avoided by excessively introverted or over sensitive or psychic, uh, psychically unbalanced situations. Shitli and shitkari pranayams are these two uh, examples of the tranquilizing pranayams. These two practices were designed to reduce the body heat and very effective during a uh, hot weather. The root word sheath, not sheath, this is not an English sheet, it is sheath that means cold, while sheetal means calm, passionless, and unemotional. So, these practices cool both body and mind. Actually, that is true uh, with all the pranayam practices. Sheetali and Sheetkari are cooling practices because the inhalation takes place through mouth rather than nose. When the breath is drawn in through the mouth, evaporation of the moisture on the tongue and the inner surface of the mouth cool the air. This cooled air then cools the blood vessels throughout the lungs, which gradually eliminates excess blood heat. The technique and effects of Sheetali and Sheetkari are the same with only uh, difference in the inhalation and we are going to look at it. First, let us look at the technique of Sheetkari Pranayam. Sit in comfortable meditative uh, posture, close eyes, relax the body, hold teeth tightly together, separate lips, exposing teeth and then the tongue may be kept flat or folded against the soft palate in the Khachari Mudra. Uh, uh, we have not discussed Khachari Mudra, but that is a very powerful mudra and uh, you can learn that online uh, Jaggi Vasudev ji or uh, Swami Ramadev ji. So, with the flat or folded uh, uh, palate, inhale slowly and deeply through the teeth. At the end of the inhalation, close the mouth, exhale slowly through the nose in the controlled manner. This is one round, we can have uh, 11 rounds of practice and that can be increased to the 21 rounds. Sheetali pranayam is slightly different, uh, where we need not to close our my mouth by uh, keeping the teeth lines touching each other. So, we can keep the mouth open. Uh, put the tongue outside of the mouth, uh, it can be flat or it can be folded, uh, that is the variation in the Sheetali pranayam from the Sheetkari. Another pranayam which is very uh, common and suddenly immensely benefited uh, and suddenly immensely beneficial is uh, Brahmari pranayam. Uh, Brahmar is the name for the bee. Uh, this practice is called because uh, we imitate the same deep and low pitched humming sound uh, of the black bee. It is used in Nada Yoga to awaken awareness of the inner psychic sound. Technique is that sit in comfortable meditation asanas uh, with the hands resting on the knees in the uh, Gyan or Chinamudra, close the eyes, relax whole body jaw should be relaxed with the lips gently closed and teeth slightly separated, 
this allows the sound vibration to be heard and felt more distinctly. Raise the arm sideways and bend the elbows, bring the, bringing the hand to the ears. That is the first uh, step towards uh, the main important steps of Brahmari. Then use the index finger to close the flaps of the ears, bring the awareness to the center of the head where Agnya Chakra is located and keep body absolutely still. Inhale through the nose. While exhaling, slowly in controlled manner produce a deep, steady humming sound like that of the black bee. Be aware of the continuous humming sound within the head. The humming should be smooth even for the duration of the exhalation. The sound should be soft and mellow, making the front of the skull reverberate. At the end of exhalation, hands may remain in the unprized position or they can be returned to the knees and then raised again for the next round. This is one round and uh, 11 round practice is the we can, with which we can start and it can be increased to uh, 21 rounds. So, these are some of the pranayams we discussed in this session. These are most commonly practiced uh, pranayams, but there are multiple types of pranayams. There are pranayams which are practiced in conjunction with specific asanas, specific mudras. So, there are there is a whole range of pranayam starting from very simple like conscious breathing to very complicated where you have to remember multiple steps and there is a particular protocol as it is taught in the Shakti Chalan Kriya by the Inner Engineering Foundation. So, there can be multiple ways and different practices depending on our emotional, physiological and spiritual needs we can pick up appropriate practices. Our gurus, the, uh, the mentors and the teachers of yoga must be respected and we must take up any practice under the guidance and particularly the practice of pranayam must be taken under the guidance of a trained uh, yoga teacher or uh, yoga master. And we can also gradually enhance the complexity of the practice. We need to be also conscious what is my core need? Is my need mostly a physiological, emotional, relational well being, or my needs are beyond these and also at the level of spiritual awakening and spiritual evolution? So, accordingly, we need to uh, pick up the practice. Uh, this is the essence. In this session, we just uh, try to give the overview of the pranayam and how this can be excellent intervention for the positive psychological outcome. So, the final thoughts of pranayams can be summarized in the words of uh, Stephen Parker. Uh, we must remember that focusing awareness on the breath activates all the integrative functions of middle prefrontal cortex and that is the basic process in all kinds of pranayams. Uh, so, that is a great benefit. Uh, second aspect is that pranayam allows individuals to be more objective in the more objective space because awareness on the breath prepares our mind to remain more objective stage and that uh, uh, awareness brings the emotional awareness and we can control our emotions better. Yoga asserts that relaxing through the pause in the breath helps the mind to maintain its attention and concentration on a single object. Breath awareness and especially focused attention on exhalation phase of the breath activates parasympathetic relaxation response. The resultant release of oxytocin uh, into the blood stream that elevates the mood problems and counters the stress as well as it promotes human bonding and healing. Many of you might know 
that oxytocin is also called cuddling hormone. It promotes human bonding and result into healing all of which contributes to our emotional health. With our anxiety in check, our me, you or we maps as identified by the impersonal neurobiology are likely to become much more accurate. Our distinction based on ego can come down and our connection based on our shared experience of life and emotions can increase with the practice of pranayama.